Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Keith sent me a story that's uh, one of those ones that makes you go, huh? Previously indicted ex-Orange County deputy charged with stealing credit cards from dead woman's Yorba Linda home. From KTLA out there in Los Angeles, uh, Serene Habishian wrote the story. A former Orange County Sheriff's Department deputy who was previously indicted by a grand jury for stealing guns and other items from a dead man's home is now facing new charges for stealing credit cards from the residence of a deceased woman in your Belinda. So this is not the first time he's been accused of this. Uh, in August of 2020, the man who is a 12-year veteran of the OC Sheriff's Department was called out to the home in Yorba Linda, where he allegedly took three credit cards. He's accused of attempting to use the cards to make thousands of dollars of online purchases, and they note in the story those purchases were unauthorized, presumably because the cards were in the name of a woman who could not give her authorization because she was, in fact, deceased. The OC District Attorney's Office said all of this in a news release recently. The man also allegedly attempted to use the stolen credit cards to make purchases from an auto parts store and from QVC Television Network. So he's sitting home watching the QVC, and they're showing you some latest, greatest household gadget. And he pulls out one of the woman's credit cards and tries to use that on QVC. Um, He also tried to have the purchases delivered to his own home address. So the majority of the charges were declined, according to the release, but he still kept trying, allegedly. Um, The man is 42 years old. Uh, He lives in San Dimas. It's a neat little town, San Dimas. I've been there. Uh, He was charged recently with one felony count of identity theft, a felony count of grand theft embezzlement, and four felony counts of attempted grand theft. Faces a maximum of four years, in four months in state prison if convicted as charged. Uh, the statement says, This individual was called to assist grieving families in a time of need, and instead he betrayed their trust, District Attorney Todd Spitzer said. This behavior is unworthy of someone who wears the badge, and thankfully, as a result of the Orange County Sheriff's Department investigation, he is no longer in a position where he can use his uniform and badge to victimize the very people he was sworn to protect. Uh, He was indicted in a similar case in December of 2020 on three felony counts of second-degree burglary and two felony counts of grand theft for allegedly breaking into a deceased man's home in Yorba Linda. So uh, in July of 2020, he responded with two other Sheriff's Department employees to that other home on Via Angelina Drive to conduct a welfare check. The homeowner was found dead of what was later determined to be natural causes. And of course, he's there on a welfare check to check the welfare of the person in the house, and he was captured on surveillance video, returning to the man's home several times, including once while on duty and wearing his uniform. So he's doing this on the clock. He's collecting a salary for working, and while working, he's alleged to have gone to the home of somebody who passed away and gone inside and taken stuff. They say he uh, stole more than $27,000 in guns and other items, including ceiling fans and weapons safes. According to the DA's office, yeah, ceiling fans. I'm sure you know those are a hot commodity these days. The Sheriff's Department initiated an investigation after the probate attorney handling the deceased homeowner's estate reported that a law enforcement officer may have stolen items from the home. It's unclear how the probate attorney would have figured that out. They may have figured out that very quickly that the credit card is being used. But how they figured out who was using it would have taken a little more work, I would think. Obviously, if you ordered things to deliver this to my house, if you could get that information to figure out who owned the home, you could figure this stuff out. But I'm just saying a probate attorney going through the file wouldn't have just figured that out on his own without having some more information. Um, He was arrested on September 10th, 2020, and resigned from the department in lieu of termination, effective September 30th of 2020. We've talked about this before. A lot of times bad cops get let go or quit or, you know, get kicked off the force uh, with bad publicity. And somehow they wind up working someplace else. It's like a reset button in a video game. Uh, Following his arrest, sheriff's officials said they were investigating whether the veteran deputy committed similar thefts and crimes while on duty. Um, Sheriff Don Barnes told reporters, I will do everything we can to make sure he does not return to a uniform in this organization or anywhere else for that matter. So guy's got the right idea here. He's embarrassed the profession. He's embarrassed this organization. He's embarrassed the almost 4,000 members who do good work 
every day. Um, so it's a crazy story. Uh, the previously indicted Orange County deputy has now been accused on two separate occasions of stealing stuff from a home after the person who lived at home had passed away. It was a bunch of valuables in the first instance, and it was credit cards in the second instance. And as noted, some of this was done while he's wearing the uniform on the job. Now, I'll mention, like I always do, that some people say, Steve, all you do is pick on cops. And, you know, when you hit the news with a story like this, you can't expect me to ignore it. But I've mentioned before that I believe that there are good cops out there. And I've actually known some police officers. In fact, I've, I've known a man who was a sheriff's deputy in California. Not for Orange County, but for another county. And um, uh, I'll tell you the story. So I was talking to him one day, and I was just, whenever I meet people from different professions, I love asking them about their jobs. And I, I was talking to him about the various aspects of his job. And he mentioned to me that he always had to carry a sidearm with him, whether he's on duty or not. We got to talking about that. And so like, he and I went mountain biking one day. And he had a fanny pack on. And I realized it was in his fanny pack. But he, he brought it with him. He always had it with him. And I mentioned that I, you know, was, was curious about that. And I said, well, what are the odds that, you know, you're actually going to be called upon to use that? He also had his badge with him, obviously. And uh, he said, well, you know, you never know. You never know. I said, have you ever used that? And he said, yes, once in my own front yard. And I said, what? And this is one of the stories that, you know, it's a crazy story. But he was driving home one day in his own personal vehicle. And he realized he's being followed. So uh, what's he going to do? Well, he could call the police, but he is the police. So he just keeps driving, realizes that this guy's still following him, still following him. So he goes to his house. And um, this may have been before cell phones were widely uh, available. I'm trying to remember the exact time frame because I know, I know when he told me the story. But I think that it happened before cell phones were common. So he could not call from his personal car to let somebody know, hey, I, I might have an issue here. And he said that uh, he pulled up his driveway and his other car stopped at the end of his driveway. And a guy jumped out, armed, and apparently was planning on carjacking him. And he said, I uh, pulled mine out and I managed to hit them before they got any shots off. And I went inside and called my boss, in essence, called 911, and said, yeah. And I mean, you know, there's a shooting in his front yard, and he had to take care of business. So that's an interesting angle on the fact that they're often required to carry it with them everywhere they go. But that's far afield from what I'm talking about right now. I'm simply pointing out I've known police officers. I'm convinced that my friend that I talked to with that story was one of the good guys. Um, and, and I believe there are Good cops, I believe there are bad cops. Here we have a very bad cop. And we have a good cop saying, I'm going to do what I can to keep this guy from getting another job as a police officer. So you got to at least respect that, right? So previously indicted ex-Orange County deputy charged with stealing credit cards from dead woman's Yorba Linda home, KTLA, published it. Serene Habishian wrote it and Keith sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. This morning I was distracted by groovy music coming from my home office printer. Yes, groovy. Apparently the paper was jamming.